Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and this is episode 309 of the Ask Gary V Show and I'm excited to have a wonderful entrepreneur uh, to take your questions. So Instagram and Facebook, start throwing in your phone numbers with maybe a hashtag or two or data point of like where your question is going um, to give Raghav some indicator but obviously as we get into this episode more data will be thrown out and so you can uh, add on that, continuously put your numbers uh, in there and we will pick some for the call. Um, but this uh, young lady has built a very impressive resume. We met on the Today Show doing some entrepreneurial stuff and I will let Ali uh, say hello. So for the Vayner Nation, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do? So my name is Ali Webb and I founded a company called Dry Bar. I feel like there's a lot of men in this room but for all the ladies out there, we are a blow dry bar. Really, the Actually, first. it's only four to three. This is actually the best ratio right. I think we normally right. have ever had. I'm so looking at all I'm the feel, guys. Yeah. Well, not just. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm pretty. I'm pretty pumped with the four to three ratio. Okay, Go good. ahead. Like, I'm happy to hear that. Go um, ahead. So yeah, we were the first. We started ten years ago. We have 125 locations across the country, 4,000 stylists. When did you start? 2010. And when you say you were the first, because I'm very aware of the movement. Maybe just because oh, I there's live in. Been a movement. Right. So. There was nothing like it when I started. Nothing. Nothing. And what? And so to back to that. And yes. I think, by the way, real quick for all the entrepreneurs there, one of the biggest questions I get is what you know. People take so much emotion in inventing something or adding on to something a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. And then when there's something successful, there's fast followers, and they get so upset about that. And I'm like, look, that's just market dynamics. Just because I'm just excited. Yeah, How do I mean, you listen, deal with that? I I feel like t- you know to unpack that a little. I, you know, blo- we didn't invent blowouts. We just right. created a much better experience around it. And the advice I and give, you went all in. Right? Yeah, and well, and we just we just kind of changed the game. And the the advice I give entrepreneurs is like there may be something out there that exists that you love, you just wish was done better. And we created a much better experience and price point and location around blowouts that just did not exist. You used to have to go to a full service salon or a well, discount chain and you know the experience just wasn't great. It was, you were overpaying. What, am I or, wrong in this? Wasn't it just one of the menu items versus exactly. the core item? It was a menu item and it was also one that most stylists didn't want to do because they wanted to use that hour to do a haircut that you could charge a lot more from. They didn't want to do a blowout which was less money and it's funny because it really harkens back to the day of like our grandmothers and grandmothers generation where they'd get their hair coiffed and they wouldn't touch it for like a week we kind of modernized that behavior but Love. make no mistake I did not know none of us knew my brother Michael Landau is my business partner also bald like none of us knew <laughs> that we what we were like what was in front of us we didn't realize how big this opportunity was I was going to open one store in LA pick up my kids from preschool and, and like have a nice that was going to be my little life yeah. and then you know the fact that like the we market responded we so underestimated the demand yeah. let me give you a comp and then we'll go back to the origin story I've, for a while now, about 20 months, it's been running through my head that like a French fries only restaurant, <laughs> QSR, would dominate, right? <laughs> you didn't invent French fries. Oh man, that's It was a good. side dish. Did you get like a, all different flavors of French fries? Yeah, I'm really hot on the whole concept of like the different ketchups and mustards and salts, <laughs> but one core French fry. So it's not like seven different French fries. Uh, my concept is this crazy French fry that everyone's about, but it's the other things, like the 11 different ketchups, the 11 different mayos, the 11 different mustards, and like the 13 it's different salts. Except that french fries are so bad for you. Yeah, but, but so they're my weakness. Are ba- no, but they're my weakness. At Allie, least we have a healthy every addiction. Every single person is getting brain cancer from cell phones. I, know. I, I don't know. need to hear people's like but hot no, takes I, listen, on french fries. If there was like, if that was like the last thing I could eat, it would be french fries. I love french fries so much. So I'm, so I am good. all in on this business. Right, I, we've already, listen, I, I do one thing ex- and do it well. That's uh, my concept. Th- that's right. I though. know that's the like first so, dry concept. So, I pu- so you started Dry Bar. Yes. It's 125 locations. Yes. Franchise model or all yours? They're predominantly company owned. I'd say we're about 40, give or take, franchised, and the rest company owned. Which you to know, th- go ahead. I can make the argument either way that it's there's great things I, about franchising and there's not great things about franchising. And you know, again, I can make look the, beauty, the argument either way. And the reason you can make an argument is now here we are, 75 years later, and both. <laughs> independently owned corporate entities and franchise models both have a place at the table. They really do, they yeah. really do. And the question just, is the mix of the two is yeah. always a fascinating and thing. And it's challenging because you know, you know ha- it's a whole business finding and, and running a franchise organization and there's a lot, there's just a different set of problems you 100%. know, and issues so. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think both are great, and we've. Where's we've the fascinated. momentum in the company now? Like, is a it- product is a big is a big push. I mean, we have 
almost gosh over 3,000 points of distribution. We're in Nordstrom, Ulta, Sephora. We're international with product. We have a massive product line from tools to dry shampoos to shampoos, like, you know, you name it. And what's great is if you don't have access to dry bar, but you know and love dry bar, which luckily most women know about now, you can buy the products and do kind of replicate what we're doing in the shops. Let's take this way, way back. What kind of girl were you growing up? Were you entrepreneurial? Were you like sporty? Were you like Well, if you asked my parents, they would have been like, they would have told you I was such the underachiever. My brother, Michael, who I mentioned, total overachiever. Michael P. Keaton, which I know you get that reference. I don't know if you listen to us. What do you mean? No. Oh, got it. Do you remember from Family Ties? Of course. Michael J. Fox. Yes. Which I'm sure a lot of people listening don't know that reference, but he was like the overachiever of the family. And, you know, I was just, I've always been You were Mallory? I was like, I don't totally remember. Her, I remember her, but not her character. Yeah. But I was just kind of like, it'll all work out. And I was never really worried about things. I Where'd you grow up? South Florida. Mm-hmm. And my hair is naturally curly. So in South Florida, it was very frizzy. And yeah. I was always trying to figure out how to get it straight. And I used to beg my mom to blow out my hair. And that theme of hair and trying to figure out my hair kind of was always there. And I, I feel like the seed was planted to do something in hair when I was a kid. But then, you know, as I grew up and went to high school and college and well I didn't really go to college I went for like a minute and I just you know all my friends knew what they were going to major in and I really didn't know and I was so lost and confused out of high school and I I went to college for a second and like a semester I, I think a I, half a semester? I, think I maybe went for a year. I don't think out. I went to like class all that much because I was like, what? I don't, they're not interested in anything. To make you feel comfortable about this conversation, <laughs> this is my high school report card. This is oh my, my God, high school see. report card. Yeah, I mean, we're about, we're about the same. Yeah, yeah. Like, just yeah. notice that there's yeah. only four Which, A's way, all in gym. Here's the greatest thing about one of my favorite things about my life is that I get asked to speak at colleges all the time. And every time they ask me, I'm like, you know, I didn't actually graduate from college. I just want to be upfront with that. But that just goes to show you that, I, I, and not that I'm against college. I mean, go to college, get an education however you can. But my parents were entrepreneurs, so I grew up in an entrepreneurial environment. So, so then, I didn't even didn't, know I was getting didn't, that education. They didn't frown on, so. No, because my parents didn't go to college either. But a lot of parents go the other way, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. But my parents were so that's cool pretty progressive. and chill. And they were like, we just want you to do what makes you happy. They weren't so thrilled when I made the decision to go to beauty school because I think they And just is that went. what happened next? So I went, no, I went to, I like went technically to Florida State. I just didn't go to class very often because yes. I grew up in Florida. Yep. And then I was like, this is not for me. I moved home and then I, I moved to New York City. I thought I wanted to work in fashion. I worked for like Nicole Miller and Cynthia Raleigh. This was like 25 years ago. And then uh, my brother and I started Nicole Miller uh, licensed stores in Boca, which is where we grew up, realized didn't want to do that. And Michael and I were fighting so much. And I was like, what the hell am I going to do with my life? And I was like, you know, the only thing that I'm really passionate about is hair. And I want to learn how to do hair. And I had worked at a hair salon in high school where they would blow out my hair and it was so magical to me. And so I said, I think I should go to beauty school. My brother, by the way, was like, you should go. I can see you doing editorial and fashion shows in New York. And I had this grand vision of what I would do with hair where my parents' stores were like little old lady clothing stores and like retirement communities in South Florida. And they were like, you want to go work at beauty parlors? And I was like, no, I want to do something amazing in hair. And of course, I didn't have the vision of dry bar back then, but I took the plunge, went to beauty school again, my parent to my parents' dismay. And how did that go? They, you know, they supported it and paid for it. I feel like my mom was paying off those loans forever from beauty school because beauty school wasn't cheap either. And, no. um, and but but I like the, literally the the day I walked in, I was like, this is where I was meant to really? be. Really, I loved it. I fell in love with it. I wanted to learn everything I could learn. It was the, the only thing I was ever really passionate about. Which I get it. It, again is such a good example for people out there who are like they feel like maybe the thing that they, they're passionate about isn't like a great career option, you know? It's my singular thesis. Yeah. I, I really believe somebody watching right now who loves, you know, Star Trek or Black Panther or, whatever or Fortnite, it is. I yeah. really genuinely, or making homemade jam, I believe it. Yeah. And I believe it because of the internet. I didn't believe it in 1963 because <laughs> there wasn't a system to go into. Yeah. Like you can start a Black Panther Instagram account and a podcast and be active on Black Panther forums and Facebook groups and over time. Get traction. Get traction yeah. and something could happen. Yeah. yeah that I mean, wasn't real. We're so living in the day where like, anything can happen. I mean, anybody can 
make it doing all sorts of stuff. And, and I think and, that and I'm I a th great I, example of that. I apologize, that. but I think making it is the biggest conversation that entrepreneurs like you and I who've made it mm. need to start helping the next generation because making it, I believe if you love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you make 100,000 a year because you have four sponsors, Nickelodeon, right. you know, the, the convention, who knows, right? Uh, and you make 100,000 a year hosting a TMT, TMNT, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like podcast and an Instagram account is a much better life than making 213 as an executive totally. at McKinsey and being grossly unhappy and taking sleeping pills. Right, because pills. I mean the term making it is, Cor is, is so relative. No, no, and, and I'm so glad you're jumping on this. It is probably, I believe that when, with, with anything that works out for you, there's, I don't think it's a sense of responsibility, but I like giving back to the game that put me on. Mm -hmm. So I love entrepreneurship so much mm -hmm. that like so much of who I am and what I'm about is to give back to the system, yeah. but you have to update the system. And we have to update what being successful looks like. It yeah. has to be happy, yeah. not rich. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. It well, has to be. I mean, I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, money is like, was not the driver ever for me. I mean, money was like, gravy you know it was like oh this oh we're gonna actually like make a living doing this amazing but it was never about money and you know we didn't we didn't pay ourselves for years you know when we first started dry bar it was never about money it's never been about money and even when Did we you started have a family taking, when you started yes i had my i have two sons and they were three and five when i started they're 11 and 14 now let's talk about that for five seconds okay i really want this is a subject matter that i've been wanting to get more into okay well, it's a particularly interesting subject matter for me because I'm going through a divorce, I'm but sorry that's public. That. But um, So let's put that on the side for a second. <laughs> so it's been quite yeah. a year for me. Uh, I respect <laughs> that and I, I'm sorry to hear that. But what if you, you can indulge me. Yes. I think one of the other things that I like to do is talk about what I know and I like to talk about things I've lived through. I will never have the luxury of being an entrepreneurial mom. No, and I think that's never going to happen. That's right. That that is not in the cards. <laughs> do you have kids though? I do. Okay. How um, old are your kids? Uh, Eleven, uh, nine, and six. About are you sure? Be, yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. It's just they're both very close to eleven and seven. Nine and six, yeah. almost eleven. Gotcha. And seven. Okay. And you know, and I think people have diff. Like I, I hate when people think they understand something that they'll never be. Mm -hmm. I love when people are like I get you. I'm like no. no you'll never be an immigrant to like, yeah. I get you, you know, you're never gonna be a woman or an African American or, a, right, or, right. A, or Muslim during this time. Like you right. can be sympathetic, you can be empathetic, but you'll never fully know. So I wanna take advantage of this because I have a humongous audience. I spend a lot of time engaging with mother entrepreneurs, but I never go all the way with my advice because I don't want to give advice that isn't predicated on things that I've tasted. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts, thoughts and theses, we all do. Sure. But I wanna take advantage of this. Yep. How much, if any, this is right off the top, a core question that I'd love to hear your perspective on. How much, if any, guilt did you feel? Tons, always This so is much something guilt. I don't believe a father will ever feel anywhere in the same world and isn't that as a mother. fucked up? Sorry. I don't think so. Can I curse? You can curse um, a lot. I don't think it's fucked up. But it I is think it's, because, I, it is because. Explain. I, I, I'm on panels all the time and, and I'm, I speak all the time and people always ask that question to Please. women. Like why why don't you feel guilty as a father when you don't get to be home with your kids as much as you could because you're working? Because it's the propaganda that we were fed. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, that's what I mean. That's what I, I mean also by think, it's I up. also think, it, I, I'm curious about this. I'm curious about the process of giving birth. Right? Well, Something else tough. I will never feel. <laughs> that is not fun. I'm making an assumption, <laughs> it hurts. though I have no idea, <laughs> that there is some sort of connection point that is fundamentally different when a human's in fuck inside of you <laughs> and then as a human versus it was never inside of me and like, uh, look, I think that, listen, I know the way I feel about my mom versus the way I feel about my dad. I love them endlessly both. There's some crazy fucking real shit going on there with mom that's just fucking real. It's true, it's like, true. I was inside of her. Yeah. Like, I, I, mean, I lived I would, there for nine months. I would that was make, my home. I would make that same joke to my ex-husband and say like, you know, they're more mine than yours because they literally came out of my I body. I genuinely actually believe that. <laughs> he, like, didn't, he didn't like that. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, especially given the context <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, yeah. you know, but like, Maybe that, but, yeah. Forget about should guys or not guys feel guilt. Back to the point. Yeah. I, it hurts my soul because entrepreneurship is hard enough 
Mm-hmm. It is so difficult. Mm-hmm. It is outrageously lonely. Yeah. It is outrageously You have lonely. to have a thick skin for it, no doubt. Oh, a, a, and especially if you're a mom. I mean, luckily, my mom actually passed away three years ago, but she was sorry. there for the beginning of Dry Bar. And, she, and when I had, my life got so turned upside down in an amazing way. And I had to travel all the time and I had so much great opportunities coming at me and there was so much momentum and excitement with dry bar and I had to travel tons and luckily my mom was there so she was with my kids all the time because th- and the guilt was massive but had I had to leave her with a nanny my kids with a nanny that would have been double mess ah god I don't yeah. even know if I could have done it because my kids were so young and you know that my mom was there it was like you know someone who like was family and loved them and so I I felt very lucky in that regard yes. but you know listen that's not to say I feel like the world is so polarizing right now. That's not to say if you have a nanny and you're an entrepreneur, that's not okay too. I appreciate that. That's okay too. Whatever works look, for you. Look, I appreciate that. And that's by the way why I don't feel like, like, look, some people are like, Gary, like inevitably, based to your point, polarizing and yeah. everybody being so hardcore. Gary, you should feel guilt. No, I shouldn't. You don't know me. Like, yeah. what about guys who, uh, who's, uh, mother has brain cancer when they start their business. Do you yeah. feel bad for them now? Yeah. Like we don't. My biggest thing is yeah. you know nothing about people. Yeah. Like my energy. And you never right know now, what's going Allie, through somebody. You can't imagine how different any news now. I'm going through a divorce. Ten years right. ago, I not that I had any judgment on that. It's funny that my brain would think about it for a second. Be like, what is that? I have become numb because of how polarizing the world is. Yeah. My hope is this is what's actually gonna happen to everybody else because my life has been predicated on doing actions a little bit earlier than others mm. and then figuring it out. Yeah. The level of judgment I have on anybody at this point is almost non-existent. Same. I, I don't know what's going on. I know what's going on with Rogoff and I at work. To a certain point, I don't, right. I, he may share something with me. Jason's shared some stuff on family stuff. I got some context, I got a little something you don't know what's going on with your spouse. You don't know what's going on with your children. You don't know what's going on with your parents all the way. Yeah. Nobody knows anybody else all the way. It's so true. I mean, I feel like my mom always said like, like this, I mean, kind nobody of re- relates. Like if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing. And I I'm feel a like, buyer. yeah, you know, it's like you just don't know. And I've, I've always felt it. Like you just don't know what someone else is going through at any given moment. So you're right. I could not and then agree all, with that statement more. all, all, will go through judgment moments. Yeah. Whether it's a divorce. But keep them to yourself. Whether, whether that, well, that, but that's, you know, you know that that's, you're yeah. gonna live, you're living it through your yeah. most inner circle and you've yeah. said, as it gets more public, yeah. people at judgment that are watching on Facebook have never heard of you. Yeah. Literally people are watching. Yeah. <laughs> Have never heard of you. I know. It's like the more. Just heard you say it seven minutes a, minutes ago, and whether they typed it or thought it, yeah. that's what humans do. And that's yeah. fine. That's natural. Yeah. It's not like I don't have judgment. Right. But I think that much like we started eating better, mm-hmm. much like we're now doing better with our mental you know, health and like yeah, meditating. Yeah, I just started doing transcendental meditation, which uh, is life changing, by the way. Good for you. And we'll go into that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> we need to start. We need this to start. This is going to be a self help podcast, start, by the way. We need to start an anti judgment. Movement. process and movement yeah i couldn't agree more. my brother's name is aj anti-judgment i kind of like this whole thing right now <laughs> please put your phone numbers in i want to get some phone calls in what was the most ridiculously fun exciting moment in the early part when did what would tell me one story in 2010 you started in 2011 2012 give me some story of where you were like Holy shit. God, honestly, there's so many. I know, I know. And it's I a great question, which I don't think no. I've really ever been asked that. And I'll tell you why I've asked it. Because I lived it. Like I had so many moments, but if I was reversed right now, I'd probably say when Conan had me on his show when I was doing my wine vlog, nobody from the internet was really on TV yet yeah. besides Perez Hilton. Yeah. And it was like this huge moment where like my brother came from college and we watched it. That was a moment where we were like, holy shit. Give me one holy shit moment. Like did well, Oprah come in? Well, did like somebody mention um, in a magazine? You know, like, what okay, was a holy so, shit moment? You know, you know Carson Daly. Very much. And he's ha- he had a radio show for a long time. I don't I know remember. if he still does. And this was pro- this was really, I think in 2010, like, within a few months of us starting, which reminds me of Ryan Seacrest had a show and Justin Bieber was talking about Dry Bar. I mean, there's, there's so many of those moments. But Ryan Seacrest, we were brand new, maybe two or three months. And Carson Daly? I'm sorry, Carson Daly. 
I started getting all these phone calls. And, and did you, like, to make this story even better, did you love Carson Daly on TRL? Yes. Okay. Uh, because, course, oh, yeah, but TRL. But yeah, I knew point, him right? because of like, TRL. Every day, yeah. cool people follow me on Instagram. And you're like, holy shit. Yes, but if it's somebody I, I really gave a fuck about, <laughs> yeah. they may be far less famous. Like, somebody may follow me that's the most relevant Netflix star right now, and I'm like, cool. But, when but we like, if a up. WWF wrestler that I grew up, like, if Brutus the Barber Beefcake followed me right now, I'd lose my shit. Really? He's there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, so go ahead. Um, but so Carson Daly had had a show, and and you would have thought we paid him because he, he went off. He was on, must have he was on his computer looking at our website, talking about all our looks. He I think he even said something like, "Oh, look at Ali Webb, who's who's this hot girl or something like that." And I was like, "He just called me hot. He's talking now about my business." Now I know why this no, story. No, no, that was the easiest tell of all time. No, I love you for that. That reason. is really the definitely the reason. But it was just if like anybody such ever a calls me hot publicly at scale. <laughs> It is the core thing I'm excited about. Let's get very I mean, it basic in here. It doesn't suck to be called hot 100%. on national radio, especially if you love TR. Like that's and exactly Carson right. Daly, yes. which, Huge. by the way, I love him. He's married, and his wife is I awesome. She comes to dry bar, nothing like yeah, that. God. Nobody think you I also just had to like seven years ago. Everything I seven say seven years ago. People are. It was ten years ago. Um, I don't even know if he was married then. Anyways, um, that was a big moment, and then very soon after that, Ryan Seacrest on the Ryan Seacrest show had Justin Bieber on they literally called dry bar and Why? Justin was like hey it's Justin Bieber I want to make an appointment to come to, to dry bar and and the girl on the phone god bless her she was like I'm, I'm sorry who and he was like it's Justin Bieber and I'd like to get the Bieber which is like when his hair was a big oh, thing remember when he had the hair this again was like 10 years ago and she was like I mean and she took it very seriously and she thought she was being like punked because why would Justin Bieber be calling? But they got the whole thing on the show. Amazing. And, and none of those things I knew about. People started calling us and they're like, you know, dry bars. And then like um, Jimmy Kimmel talks about us all the time. But his wife, Molly, who's now a friend, who wasn't a friend in the beginning, she she's his, one of his writers and she would write and she goes to dry bar all the time. So she would write us into the Jimmy Kimmel show. And it was the same thing. I was like, Jimmy Kimmel is talking about us on like his late, late night what, show. What was the single scariest day so far? <sighs> well, the last nine years, what was the single, singular, toughest day for you personally? And it might not have been like some death blow to the company, but for you personally, yeah. like what was I think, a so a while, a while ago, I don't remember, how, it was still very new, maybe a year or two in, we were starting to do kind of promotions with big companies and we were doing something with HBO. We do a lot of partnerships now with big companies and promoting like movies or TV shows because we have flat screen TVs in our shops that you can watch while you're getting a blowout. Um, and we do a lot of partnerships now, but the very first one we did was with HBO girls yep. and <laughs> we didn't realize that you, they basically HBO was giving away, it was doing happy hours. So they were giving away free blowouts to like the first, you know, I don't know what it was like hundred people who called and, and it was just one happy hour. And we, I think we had at the time, like maybe 20 stores and those people who called first got free blowout. We promoted the shit out of this to our entire audience, which was like, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand at that point. And we were giving out a couple of hundred blowouts, which was way more, we disappointed way more people than we actually like delighted. So it was such a fuck up. And we didn't realize it at the time that we, we needed to kind of like purse it out and not, not, not tell everybody they can win a blowout when a very small the first, per, right, percentage so can. So the first group was pumped and then the... Yeah, and then, it, but what would happen is, you know, it like totally backfired on us because so many more people couldn't get in on and it. And we're like, go fuck yourself, we, like, I've been loyal from it. day one. Yeah, and we were like, oh shit. And, and they were right and people were upset and I was getting... I mean, I was getting so many like mean emails. We, I we had to like categorize them, and I had to like make a statement to the press. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, we we messed up. We didn't realize we didn't do this right. Which now we learned our lesson, and we're like yep. more careful and methodical. Phone numbers. We're about to do questions. Please, you got one. Yeah. Go ahead. That makes sense. Yeah, it was crazy. It, there's really you learn, not but you much have to learn more disappointing than when you think when you're, you're on the verge. More importantly, yes, of course. But when you think you're on the verge of something super cool. You're like pumped about it the day before. You're like, this is going to be awesome. And then you get and then beat four up. seconds in, you're like, oh. And then you get shit. your ass kicked and you're like, oh man. Who's this? Nadia. Nadia. Hello? Hey, Nadia, you're on the Ask Gary B show with Ali Webb. Hi. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> it's not that Hi. crazy. You put a phone number into the Don't stream. You love today. We, you know, so oh you're here. my gosh. <laughs> where, where, where are you from okay, and what's your first question? Of all, yes, go ahead. Gary, I've been following you for like seven or eight years since I was before I even graduated high school, and you've totally changed my mindset in so many ways. 
Gives me the and nice. I'm I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, um, a- Allie. I am a pretty recent graduated hairstylist Yay! so I've only been working for like a year and a half amazing um, congrats uh dry bar was my first hair job ever amazing. and so I worked at the Louisville Kentucky location amazing so wait wait and, Nadia basically yeah. Allie and I are completely responsible for your life <laughs> yeah we'll take honestly it. kind of it's really crazy um Hope and I'm so listening. grateful to have been able to work at Dry Bar to begin with because it really set a ground for me as a, as a stylist because it gave mm. me comfort and guidance. Oh my God, and you're going to make I me cry. Really have, <laughs> I didn't really have to have like that, that scary moment of like, oh my gosh, I could really screw up somebody's hair. So it was a great foundation That's for awesome. me as a hairstylist. And I, I left about, mm, it's probably been like eight months ago because I wanted to pursue hairstyling as you know, like a full service right. gig. So I want to okay. do color cut, that whole thing. Okay. Um, anyway, I have really just been hesitant to put myself out there on social media, which I've done before. I've worked with, you know, brands and I had a blog and stuff like that. And I kind of took like a, like a break from that, but I'm struggling to get back into it. And Why? Um, I like, what's the, like, what's the true answer? Is it because you're starting from a low point and you don't like the perception of not having a lot of followers? Is it you don't feel great about how you look? Is it that you you're don't know what to say? You're not confident in your work. You know, like, like what's the real answer? Let's save time here. I think it comes down to um, if I put myself out there and say somebody comes to me because they liked something that I posted and then if I disappoint them in the hair salon, that that's, well, listen, kinda... let me tell you, from somebody who's been doing hair for 20 years, I have disappointed people and I have made a lot of people happy. You will never not disappoint. Like there will always be something that it that doesn't work out. I mean, it's when I when I talk to a stylist and sometimes it's sometimes it's chemistry. You know, sometimes I, and this is something I tell my stylist all the time. Like you mm-hmm. could you could do something with someone's hair that the person next to you, a stylist next to you, would do the exact same thing, but they might like it better from them because sometimes it's just a chemistry thing. The way they like the way you touch them, the way like the way it feels, mm-hmm. they like your personality, the way you look. I mean, speaking yeah, going back to judgment, it's oh like my God, you I would never be the greatest why. hairdresser ever or like person because I would just appease the person's insecurities. Which, that's by the 90% way, percent of the reason people go, which which is so true. And by the way, <laughs> that's such a great insight that you have that Thank because you. the other thing, it's Natalie, right? Natalie? Nadia. 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 So the other thing is like, just be confident there. Like people can smell fear on you. If you're a hairstylist, like people are expecting you to be really confident in what you're doing and, and like fake it until you make it in this industry. You yeah. just have to come at it with this. Like I am, you know, not being arrogant, but you have to be confident in what you're doing. And, and you know, and you have to understand that like not everyone is going to love you, but if you come at it with this, like you think you're great, you're going to give them something great. And if, and if you don't, you don't, and you move on to the next. Nadia, I think I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to build on what, what Ali said, look, I think, I think faking confidence is very hard. I really do. But let me give you something that I think could really help you. As to somebody okay. who has an enormous amount of confidence, who's desperately afraid of letting anyone down. I'm gonna say something that I believe very much and I genuinely think might work for you. You do know that the ability to fix a mistake is the greatest part of being alive. That's how you learn. Yeah. So let me explain. I see a great post. I love the last six things you did on your Instagram. I decide to DM you. I come to you. I pay you $98, $150, whatever. Uh, You do your thing. I look in the mirror. I go, what the fuck? At that moment, you are in control, not them. Mm -hmm. You can give her her money back. You can give her three hairstyles for free in perpetuity. Like, you can do whatever you want. You, you're in control. That may not be what everybody thinks is the right move, yeah. you know, and I fully understand yeah. that. But like, most people don't think most things I do is the right move. <laughs> what Ali thinks is the right move, based on her reaction, what I think, this is what's so great. There is no right, there's only yeah. right for you. For me, I use money, right, as a way to subsidize the way I feel. And so if mm-hmm. I don't feel good about it, I'll give you a great example, back to even the nuance of me and Ali's body language on this answer. (laughs) If I cut the hair, Ali says this is dog shit, and I feel like Ali's completely out of her mind and just one of those kind of characters, I'm not giving her another cut or her money back. 
If Ali says, uh-huh. this is dog shit, and I say, you know, I was worried about my grandma's health today. Like, I knew I had another appointment on the back end, and I did rush uh-huh. it a little bit, and I don't feel great. My ability to do something about it right then and there is real. You shouldn't worry about it because the reality is you're actually in control. And I agree with that, you know, but I think, yeah. I do think that as a hairstylist, like you, you know, when you're first starting out as a hairstylist, because I've been in her shoes, like it is, it's very jarring. And especially like you were saying about cutting someone's hair, doing some mm-hmm. change, making a permanent change. I remember, I was so nervous. Like I felt like I was like, you know, I was going to cut people. When I, when I first got on the floor, when I first started doing hair, I was like nervous. I was going to cut people. I was so fucking scared. Yeah, of course. But, <laughs> I, but you, you have to, I, I understand what you're saying about not being able to fake confidence, but I think you do have to dig deep and be like I've got mm-hmm. this if it doesn't work with this woman it doesn't work it's okay and it is a learning and, it, and it, it's not gonna always work I didn't I don't think every haircut I ever gave has been the greatest haircut but I learned uh-huh. from every single haircut I did look I, I, and yeah. I could cover it up with a great blowout and I think and I think yeah. the gr- <laughs> and I think uh, and Nadia, I think the other thing is just understanding you're in control I mean this whether whether these two perspectives bring you value or not it's understanding mm-hmm. you're in control like what like what's gonna happen like perspective yeah. matters too. Like, I don't uh-huh. know. You know how scared I am every day when a 16 year old who's getting like mentally abused in his home grabs my arm in the middle of the street and asks me what he should do with his life? Like, it sounds uh-huh. super scary to cut somebody's ear when you're cutting their hair. You know what's more scary? Somebody who's so bought into you that whatever comes out of your fucking mouth is how they're gonna live their life in a disproportionately scary situation. The reality is mm-hmm. I know my intent is pure. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the best I can. I try to hedge that, hey, here's my point of view, kid, but like, you know, give it to, you know, have some, you know, and I think totally. you're in control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good advice. I appreciate that a lot from both of you. All right, good luck. Thank you so much. You're Bye. Right. All right, let's get another one. Isn't the, aren't the calls so fun. fun? Let's do this all day. Listen, no joke, it's funny you said that. I was thinking the other day, like what, you know, I put out so much content, I do my thing, but this is such a rarity for me. Like I run a thousand person company, I'm yeah. an operator. Yeah. And I always say, what would happen if I was just Gary Vee at all times? And I said, man, I would literally do a morning show called Tea with Gary Vee, ironically I'm drinking tea right this second, and I would literally do this from 7 a.m. to 11. No, day. I know, that's like, day. that's like my big dream is like having the my The number talk you show. have dialed is oh. not in... That's what I want to do. That's what I kind of want my next thing to be, a talk show. <laughs> not, you, not a call-in, like a TV talk show. Look, I think, you know. I Just think, putting it out in the universe. What, 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 you know, back to you and I having two different kind of uh, angles. Yeah. Not points of view, angles. Give me, while Rogoff's getting the next answer, don't send it yet, because I have a really funny question, because what I really enjoyed in that call was a really important thing, which is, you know, I hear advice from people that are successful all the time that would have never worked for me. Mm-hmm. Right, and I give it, sure. and I give my two cents on things all the time, and I can't necessarily give the right advice for that person. Give me, give me something that you thought you heard or read or advice your parents gave as entrepreneurs that ended up being very different than what worked for you. Was there anything? I feel like my parents were much more um, conservative with their business and the way they went about things, and and their stores were like you know, these like li- like little old lady stores and they didn't they didn't spend a lot of money on the decor and making it look and feel a certain way. And it was more utilitarian than yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, it really was. And like, I remember my, 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 when Michael was trying to get them to go switch from like literally cash register to computer and they were like very resistant on it. They, you know, they were kind of- My st- dad didn't take credit cards in his liquor store when I first started. Yeah, I'm sure. And that's how, in that's exactly- That's how my parents were and- and when, when we told them we were spending, you know, half a million dollars on the build out of Dry Bar, they were like, we're like you guys are idiots. You're out of your minds. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? So, you know, and, and honestly, I have to give my brother a lot of credit because he, he knew this award winning architect, Josh Heitler, who helped, who's built all our stores and was like, you, you know, he had that insight even more than I did that like we have to spend a lot of money to make it yeah. look beautiful so people want to be there even though we're you know I wanted to charge $35 and we started because I wanted this to be an affordable luxury that women of all walks of life could do and you know Michael had the insight to make it look really beautiful and high end awesome. and juxtaposition and you know and that's also like the beauty of a partnership how and much do you think aspirational affordability played out in your success tons I'm a I, I couldn't tons. be more passionate about this subject matter yeah. you can't 
have Jay-Z's home. You can't have Jay-Z's girl. You yeah. can't have Jay-Z's yeah. plane. But you can drink the same well, champagne and that's exactly, that Jay-Z has. And that's why that works. And that's exactly, you know, was my thinking on it. Was like, I want this to be something that you can do if you're not a celebrity or can afford to have somebody come in to your Kentucky, house. In Kentucky, not just Boca, yeah, New York, even and LA. in LA. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in, yeah. there's a subset of, obviously there's a lot of the celebrities majority. In, in LA where I live, but there's also a lot of like college students and like, you know, working women who don't have, you know, can't spend 150 or $300 on a blowout to go to a wedding or on a date or whatever what it is. What was the price of the blowout when you launched? 30, 35. And now? 45. And did it go 35, 40, 45? Or it went yeah, 35, 45? it's been a slow yeah. build, which, you know, yeah, I wish we didn't have to, but we do. But that's, that have makes to. a ton of sense. That's yeah. why I asked. Like, yeah. I knew without knowing that that's, yeah. that's inevitable. Yeah. Cost of goods, reality, like. Rent. It's like real 000. life. It's re- you can't go out of business. Yeah. Hello? Zero. Yeah, exactly. Hello? Hello? Hey, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on with Ali Webb on the Ask Gary Vee Show. Who's this? Hey, this is Virginia. Hi, Gary. Hi, Virginia. <laughs> Oh my God, this is awesome. How are you doing? We're doing super well. Awesome. Good yeah. to talk to you and you too, Allie. It's, it's great to be on. Uh, nice to meet you. Where are you from and what's your question? Uh, I'm from York, Pennsylvania. Um, I work a full-time day job in an office. Uh, also work as pretty much a full-time dog trainer. Uh, I train on evenings and weekends, um, give myself Friday evenings off from dog training. Good but, you. Um, you know, I'm working on transitioning out, really working as hard as I can to, you know, build up enough, enough capital so that my husband's comfortable with me leaving the day job because um, it's risky. Um, it's more risky to him than it is to me, but it's risky. And I'm finding very recently that I'm hitting a lot of burnout. I hit burnout like once every couple weeks where I'm just like fucking exhausted. I can't focus at the day job. I don't want to fucking do anything there. I'm doing, you know, dog training stuff on the side. And I just wanted to hear both of your opinions on dealing with burnout when you know you can't do anything else but trudge through it, like advice, tips, that kind of thing, and whether either of you have experienced burnout and what you guys did for yourselves to deal with that. Where, where's the passion? In the dog training, yes. right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, you know what's funny that you just said that? Because I, I couldn't think, totally tell. She, well, she's also not burnt out. She just can't wait to be full-time dog training. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Okay. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I feel like everyone, this is like a thing where everyone has to pay their dues and yes. and it's just it, I mean shit I did I'm sure Gary did like you know you have and I think that like the way to first of all burnout is real and yes I've had burnout and by the way in another life I had a dog walking business so I know I I am very passionate about doggies too when I have to <laughs> nice um who need some training so if you want to come out to LA um, just um I will book a flight <laughs> but but you know I think I, th- I mean I think burnout is real I, I think I have two pieces of advice on this like are you taking care of yourself and are you doing things that make you feel good and replenished like for me I I think I was just saying to Gary that I just started doing transcendental meditation or getting a massage or a manicure or maybe just like taking a nap or going on a hike like finding something that like kind of refuels your soul and to know this is the second part of it to know that like the day job is temporary and it's not going to always be that way and you may not be able to see that right now but you're going to get to a point where you're not going to have to do the day job because you've been hustling and hustling and eventually, you know, the, the pendulum is going to swing towards the, the dog training business and you'll be able to quit the day job. You will, as long as you have the passion and you're working really hard at it, you just have to, and I think the silver lining to get you through is that you know there is an end in sight. Right, I, I also, absolutely. I also think you have to figure out where the burnout's coming from. So I believe, mm-hmm. I believe that most people get burnt out when they don't feel in control. And what... What, where I wanna go with this question is the following. I think you're ready to make the move. I think your husband doesn't want you to. And, and that's, that's the hardest thing is that, sorry, I'm outside. Um, with the dogs. That's the hardest thing is that he's very, he's very encouraging for me. He wants me to go full time 
it's it's financial. We're we're kind of in a close well, can, financial strait right now. Can so you it's cut like, back on other things? Like I feel like listen, like when I yeah, and I, we are, we definitely are. Because um, and it, I don't know yeah. if, if you ever have done this. And I was just telling a girlfriend of mine who's on who's like working on a budget. Like I, there's amazing budget apps. And when you know years ago, I, even now I do this where you can basically put you give yourself a set amount of money that you can spend and you cannot go over it, and you put everything you mm-hmm. spend every single day in that, and you you basically basically cut back and on things that you shouldn't like don't eat dinner out do no you shopping. own your home yeah yeah we do you should sell it <laughs> yeah i've thought about talking to him about that actually listen, listen to me and listen to me real good i don't know whether you should sell your home or not but here's what i should tell you and i believe it more than anything happiness needs to be the roi of life not being able to tell people you own a home nobody gives a shit and yeah, but real estate is such a good investment. Happiness is a better investment. I agree, but Period. I mean, let's play here. Yeah. For example, real estate is a great investment. Let's play it out. Right now, the real estate market's very good. Mm-hmm. She's burnt out every couple weeks. She's not making the move that she already knows she can do. You can feel it through the fucking weird phone, yeah. right? And one of the reasons is short-term financial stress. I believe she can sell her home right now in the height of the market, go rent, get way happier, happiness leads to effectiveness. She starts this dog walking business that is successful and what she has to figure out in the Delta is when the economy gets softer, is the dog walking business gonna get hurt more than the appreciation of the real estate? And that becomes a very different kind of question. But who cares how good your home returns if you're unhappy? Especially when another person is dictating your decision. Yeah, I like, hear you, but no, listen, yeah. I understand that yeah. it's not the most conventional point of view. Yeah, because like rent, you, you feels like you're throwing away money. Yeah, but 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 these are things that we've believed in, in the past. Your parents thought you were an idiot for five hundred thousand dollars in aesthetics. Yeah, rent is throwing away money is a nineteen seventies point of view. But no, you know it. It is paying a mortgage is is going towards a, something. Paying yeah, but the rent biggest asset like, in the world is your mindset. I agree. People want to fucking work out and spend money on meditation and they don't want to spend money on their happiness. My meditation doesn't cost money. Respect, but you see where I'm going? Like <laughs> People are like, hey, Gary, you need to take a vacation. You need, they, they do escapism. They yeah. fix the sink, but they don't fix the well. Yeah. She's dying inside she, because she's so ready to run this business and she has a partner in life that she clearly respects and loves enough to take into consideration, yeah. but she's ready, yeah. right? You're ready, right? Yeah. I have been ready. I got good Absolutely. news for you. You're gonna be more. You're gonna be burning out more often. Once you make the mental switch as a human to be ready for the next thing, you can't hold on and, to the last. And here's thing. another little piece of advice. I mean, to maybe not sell your house, if mm-hmm. you know, is like maybe maybe you go from like the day job that you hate so much into something that's more of a day job in the line of work that you're that's in. A great piece of advice. Go work at. Uh, you know, I, I mean, in LA, there's a place called Healthy Spot that's like a dog place. I mean, go work at a place that's at least in the arena of what you love. So when in the meantime, mm-hmm. while you're not ready to make the full-time leap from your day office job that you hate, go into a job that you kind of like that has to do with dogs. It has to like, that can kind of fuel your your passion, but you're not 100% out of a second income. Right, right. I've thought about that too, for sure. What's, what's really, so like talk to me. I'm really interested in this subject matter. I'm not letting you go just yet. Like, <laughs> you got it. I, I, um, let, let me answer some questions for me. Your husband's working and contributing as well? Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Can you rent a room in your house? How many extra rooms in your house do you have that you guys don't really, really use? <laughs> Honestly, none. Good, good. We, we have a you. really small ass house. Good. Respect. <laughs> no, I really appreciate that. Are you marketing your dog training business? Like, are you, how many, are you, can, can that get to the next level? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to start investing in more marketing. Like, I started yes, just by making a profile on thumbtack.com. And I've been, like, living off of that, but I have my website up and running. I've been getting a lot of organic what reach a, on the website without a, even putting any money into Google ads or Facebook ads yet, so. What about Instagram? 
Uh, I have an Instagram page, but I haven't been doing anything with that yet either. I really want you to go you heavy into that dog walk, you, dog yeah. walking, localized and like cute services. pictures of dogs. Like Kill. that, that there's nothing Kill. that gets more attention than like really cute fucking pictures of dogs. I mean, am I right? <laughs> Everybody in this room is shaking oh, yeah. their head. You can get that's like it's such a like slam dunk when you have cute pictures of dogs, especially if you're like I can make your dog when stop you when you're on the floor. out. What's going on? It's because. Is it happening out of actual physical exhaustion or is it more it's Wednesday and you're going into the next eight hours and you hate that you're doing that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like all, every, every couple Look, weeks Allie, I just I, get I, like physically I think, exhausted I, I think you're and then is- every once in a while it's like mental exhaustion too. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think Allie's drilling these practical advices like I love like I'm a big fan of getting a different job that pays you less than the thing you like I I just Just as a bridge no I think it's awesome yeah I'm just also a pretty (laughs) big fan of like selling homes I don't know if I agree with the selling your house I get it I get it and I think you find something else because I think you could probably find something else that that you love in the dog world you know know what's really interesting a lot of the Silicon Valley people that made a ton of money in the last wave of all the their houses don't never own a home and continue not to. I'm really serious about this. I think owning a home and going to college in 25 to 40 years is gonna look more like women should stay home and raise families did 30 years ago, 50 years ago. I'm not kidding. Really? I really do. Why? Because because I think the, the practicality around them was more realistic for the world we lived in in the past. But if but if you own a home, you're putting money towards something that you own. If you're renting something, you're putting money that towards something that you don't get back. But when you take into account people not knowing how to put down deposits, which may be the answer to this question, right? Right. Uh, oh, and, you have to do it smart, and you have to yeah. But that's not what actually manifests, that's right? True. And so, like to me, when you take three hundred thousand or fifty thousand or ten thousand dollars yeah. out of your account, and you add a mortgage, you know, to me. For what? Like, you know, like for what? Like, what? Like, okay, so you have an asset, so you're making an assumption that the appreciation of that is going to turn into something that you, what? You sell and then move to Florida? Like, I think there's, you know. But I don't think it has to be a huge gain. You know, if you can, if you can gain, you know, 50 grand or 100 grand or whatever it is from the buying, from selling your house to to upgrading a little bit. Is that 50 grand or 100 grand worth living another four and a half years? in an unhappy state on a daily basis. I think basis. there's other things she can be doing to She's not be in She's fucking answering questions that I don't like. She has no extra rooms. Her husband is <laughs> she working and She can get a different, she can get she a different day us, job. She hasn't given us a whole lot of other things. And she's got the support of her husband who wants her to just pursue this full time. I think there's a way for how, her to do how it. How well is the dog business doing? Uh, fairly well. What does like, that mean? I, I'm pretty much... I'm I'm booked out for the next two weeks with appointments. I have how much, how much money phone have consults you made? and consults much, coming in. Let me ask you a question. Without uh-huh. being delirious and your best yeah. guess, how much do you think uh-huh. you can make a year if you went full time? Just your best guess, be relatively conservative, like don't be emotionally excited. Like try to really give yeah. me an answer here. Like like what do you think? Guaranteed, I could make as much as I'm making at the day job. Probably another twenty grand more than that, so like sixty so grand. So now, what's happening is the annual. action. Ready? Now, what's happening with you is the debate that Ali and I are having in a great way, which is the thing that drives me like you cannot imagine, which is perception <laughs> versus reality. Yeah, just do mm-hmm. it. You are taking on your husband's lack of interest in risk and making it your own. In a world where if you do not quit your job tomorrow, yeah, just quit your I'm, job. I'm pissed. Yes, quit your job. <laughs> you will have a you will have a, such a short amount of downtime. Prepare it. for that time. Get ready. Make sure you guys don't spend any money that you absolutely don't have to spend. Even if it takes you, I think maybe not tomorrow. If it takes you a month to get your like act your ducks in a row, so you can then say, okay, I'm going to quit. And I'm going to give myself a month to build up my business, and then you're done. Build up. You your just business. have to do it. You mean the business that pays you as much as the fucking job you have that you. Yeah. Yeah. Hate that makes you have mental burnout. This is like this right. is like entrepreneurship 101. Like this is a problem, honestly, and I don't know if you agree, Gary, that most entrepreneurs have. They are so afraid 
to leave their jobs and to pursue their passion, usually because of money, which is why, you know, it's like either now, maybe you're, you're so far gone that you're so unhappy, but to all entrepreneurs out there listening, if you have, if you have intent and hope to eventually start your own business, start putting money aside in a secret account that you cannot touch now. So once you're really ready to pursue that, you have a cushion. I feel like so many people I talk to don't have the, the, they're not set up to start their business and then and they get answer, to the point where they're burned and out. And answer is to raise capital, not to yeah. build something practical. Like get yourself to a position or if there's, you know, your, your mate or parents or somebody who can give you that like buffer, that cushion, so then you can go and do it. You know, you have to just get yourself prepared to it. And sometimes that takes a year Virginia, of planning. Virginia, who's in your world saying jump and who's in your world saying don't jump? Uh, my husband saying jump in a little while. <laughs> how, how long has he been saying that? Um, not that long because I haven't really, I haven't really been gung ho about going full time. Like I've been saying, oh, next year I'll do it. Like last year I was saying next year's the year. And now that I'm here, I'm like, okay, by the end of the summer. And he's going, uh, if you're ready, then okay, by the end of the summer. Listen, life is short, my friend. Like, you know, it's like life is too short to be like doing something that you're not happy in. Like, you know, it's like. Yeah. Allie's tune has changed because you gave her, because what I love about Allie and, and gathering here. <laughs> no, still don't want her to sell her house. That's fine. And I respect <laughs> the shit out of that. And I'll tell you why. You don't want her to sell that, her house because your filter is proper. It's very practical. Yeah. I, everything that's come out of your mouth has been so disproportionately practical. <laughs> the only difference between you and I on this issue is I have a perspective today that believes selling a home is a practical behavior. Yeah. And you don't, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But everything you've been saying is practical. The reason Ali's changing her tune to go now and, and life is short is you've given her the data and the information to know this transition is practical. I've got news for you, mm -hmm. by the way. This is by doing this for a long time. You're going to do 25 to 50 percent better than you think. Yeah. Just I so agree. you know, real quick, yeah. when you call back in a year, you're gonna make 50 percent more than your job because of everything I've heard here for the and last. And by the way, I think seconds. you called in today because you wanted us to, to tell 100%. you to do it. 100 percent. And we're telling you to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Quit your 100%. job. Pursue your dream. Get your husband on the phone. Yeah. Three way. What's what's his name? <laughs> What, what's your, Virginia, like, what's your what husband? The fuck? <laughs> he's, he's in a really big board meeting, actually, what's Gary. His, I don't think name? he can get on the phone. What's his name? Jake. I want Jake. you, me, and Jake on a phone in the next 24 hours. I want you to email Gary at VaynerMedia.com. I want me, you, and Jake Damn, I'm on. Damn, I'm going to miss the call. Me, you, Allie, you can be part of it. Four-way yeah, call. Call me. Four-way <laughs> call. That new FaceTime group shit. And I want to tell, like, they're, listen to me. And listen to me good. You need to move fast. I mean, the world could end yeah. next week. And, and like, like, there's no doubt that this is what you should be doing. Yeah. There really isn't. And you, by the way, the reason you've been recently burnt out more is because you're you, ready. You switched. You switched. Yeah. You ch you, your switch mm -hmm. went off, and now it's all terrible. It's why in fourth grade, yeah, can't I quit stand school. It anymore. I switched in fourth grade. In fourth grade, I switched from school is the way out, school is good, school will help me, to oh fuck, school will not help me, school is not the way out, and I switched dramatically earlier right. than most people, but this is when you switch yeah. when you're in a relationship, one week earlier, you're in love. We're gonna get married. Life is amazing. And then something happens and you switch. And then three months later, people break up. Like, this is, you've yeah. switched, you know that you're switch switched. Yeah. And now, you're, so and now you're unhappy. And by the That's way, good you're gonna I get, so you're gonna get systematically more unhappy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's only one way to go from here. Virginia, you switched. Virginia, do it. Just All right. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it so much, Good Gary luck. and Ali. I really do. Good luck. Good luck. And and, and Virginia, don't take the high of this 17 minute, 33, four yeah, second call. Yeah, hold on to it. And like you need to hold, like this is, you need this tonight when you talk to Jake. You need this tomorrow. You need this, you need this. At, do not do what everybody does, which you're hyped as fuck now. And your head's like, yep, Monday or a month from now. 
and like, uh, the reason I want you to go tomorrow and not 30 days from now is I'm worried about the vulnerability of 30 days from now yeah. actually becomes September, the day after Labor Day, which then actually becomes Christmas when then, then something weird right. happens and all of a sudden it becomes, and fucking fuck, Virginia. Yeah. Fucking fuck, yeah. Virginia. <laughs> and meanwhile, I asked if I could curse on the show. Yeah. Like fucking quit tomorrow, let's I'm go. With, I'm with you. And if you quit tomorrow, I'll make you a promise. If you quit tomorrow, I will personally, I never do this, I will personally heavily shout out your business on social to get you 50 clients you would have never had. I will too. And Ali will too. But you she must quit tomorrow. <laughs> and you have to prove it to me. You're so intense. A little bit. You want her to sell her house and quit her job. I do. You know what? You can come live with Gary I'm, too. You sure can, because I'm fucking about happiness here. Yeah. You guys rock. Thank you so much. What's going to happen tomorrow? She's going to quit her job and sell her house. I'm fucking quitting, man. Virginia, are you, are you going to quit tomorrow? Yeah. You, are you, you swear? Yeah, I am. No, for real, for real. Don't fuck with me because my for emotions real. get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> for real, Gary. Because you're ready, right? I am. You quit six weeks ago, 13 weeks ago. Now you're just going through negative motions. Yeah, I am. I know. All right, I love you. And this is, this is so fun. So fun. Let's do See this ya. all day. Love you both too. Bye-bye. Good luck. Well, listen, don't like say it too much because you know we're going to get bombarded by TV <laughs> producers and being like, you two. We should have a show. You two. All right, I got to get you out of here. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank question you. Question of the day. You get to ask it. Every time a guest's on here, they get to ask the question of the day. What, and now, be selfish or curious here. You, you're going to get a lot, thousands of answers on social. So what question do you want to ask the masses? Whether you want to be very directly to your business, something macro, wherever you want to go, this is your, uh, your opportunity. But the question of the day from Allie. What's like your age demo? Do you know? Yeah. Of course you know. Uh, it's kind of like, so it's like very heavy 17 to 35 year old male. Then. Male? The, yeah. Well, then, I never but, get but male demos. That's 65%. Okay. But then 35% is like 27 to 49 year old female. Okay. Um, I, you know, what I, I, I knew about this question, so I was thinking about it all day. I, I'm kind of curious, like what, in like today's society, like what is the most like with social media and everything, like what is the most important, what do people care, what do you care about the most in the world? Like, you know, is it like your family? Is, is it your job? Like, I'm just so curious, like what is driving people today? Um, and before we go off the air, so a girl in my office, her name is Stacy Levine. She's, she's Stacey? my, Stacy. she's my social media. Yes. Like, I, I don't know what her actual title is, shit. Stacy, I love you. Way. She's like so near and dear to my heart. She's obsessed with you. Thank and you, I told Stacey. her that I would give you her a shout out and you would give her a shout out. Stacy, I love, where is she in LA? She's in, yeah, she's All in right. California. Well, I hope I get to meet you, Stacy. Thank you so much for the love. <laughs> thanks for watching. Allie, and thank you for, for having me. This was so, this so, was fun. so fun. You guys are all awesome. This is so cool. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. On this episode, rock star entrepreneur Ali Webb stops by. Awesome.